Hi, welcome to The Drama Coach. My name's Lisa and this is my channel all about drama and theatre arts. So in this video, I am going to describe and explain the questions or the knowledge part of the Acting Lambda exam for the medal grades. So this is grades six, seven and eight, or your bronze, silver and gold medals. If you're studying a lower grade, one through five, have a look in the link below and click on that and I have described the questions for those grades. So let's get started with grade six or your bronze medal. So you probably already know you are performing two pieces and this might be two monologues or it might be two duologues. In previous grades, you may have done a combined entry where you did a monologue and a duologue. You can't do that anymore in the medal section. It has to be either a mono or duo exam. So, oh, and you will have picked these not from the Lambda specification, but this time they are free choices, but within the parameters that Lambda gives you. So it gives you sections to pick from, and I'm sure your teacher's gone through that with you, but if you have any trouble picking your pieces, then drop me a comment and I will give you some help. So grade six, you've done your two monologues or your two duologues, and then your examiner will ask you these questions. There are three. The first question is, the breathing techniques that are used to support the voice in each scene. Now there's a lot here to think about with breathing techniques. At its most basic, for any scene or performance, you need to be using your diaphragmatic breathing. I'll pop a link to that video as well. You need to be filling those lungs, supporting with your diaphragm and what feels like speaking from your belly. You may already know this. You need this for the support. You need this for the projection, the air, supports your projection. But then of course, you've got all the characterization on top of this, and this is where the fun begins. Once you've got your diaphragmatic breathing, your voice that is supported, you can then play around with snatching breaths in your chest because you're upset or exhaling because you are disappointed. In your rehearsals prior to getting to the point where you're answering these questions, play with breath. It is so, well, I was going to say interesting. It's more than that. It's so essential to every piece of acting that you do. Um, the way we breathe expresses so much as to how you feel. You know, usually the relaxed breaths are deeper and the, and the more panicked or worried ones are more shallow. Um, I don't know. Think about laughter. Some people laugh on an out breath. Others laugh on an in breath. Oh, but, Tears, you know, when you're crying, your breathing changes completely or recovering from being upset. You might do a double snatch of breath. I do have a short video on breathing and I'll pop that link in as well. So the breathing used to support. So the word support there, you know you need that support, but then you're supporting for each scene you perform. And you might be supporting in a different way, as I've just described, and there are loads of other ways that you can use your breath. So, you know, experiment and then go and write down your answer to this question. The more detail you can give, the better. Don't rely on just a chat with your teacher or just watching this video and, oh, yes, I've got it. Be prepared, internalise that answer for both of your scenes as to how you use your breath. Okay, so that's bullet point one. Told you these would be longer than the earlier grades. Point two, the character's objective in each scene that is performed. So we're talking about the word objective now, and I love this word. Whereas previously, I think it was the, the intentions, you know, objective was sort of hinted at. But now the spec is really asking for you to know your objective what does your character want to achieve? Gosh, I can pop some links in about this as well. 
I like my students to actually think about their super objective. This is a Stanislavskian term to think about their character's life goal. What do they want to achieve here? And then break it down into smaller bits. Well, actually in this one scene, she or he is just trying to achieve this. So your objective is going to depend on why you're there, what you're doing, what you're saying, who's put you in this situation. The objective would begin with two. My character's objective is to escape this situation or to comfort her sister or to fill in the blank. So write your objective down for each character and check in batches what you're doing. Maybe you need to tweak your objective throughout your rehearsal process. Maybe actually, no, it's not just to comfort her sister. It's to comfort and protect her sister, whatever it might be. Really consider, it shouldn't be that you just tack these knowledge questions onto the end of the study. They're there to help and enforce your study and ultimately make you a better actor in these exams. Gosh, we've talked about bullet points um, to a fair bit there. So the first point was the breathing. Second point, objective. Third point, this is my bugbear with some of my students sometimes. The character's role within the context of the play as a whole. Your piece at this level has to be from a full play. You need to read it. Ideally, watch it. I mean, there's so much out there these days. If you can't go and see it live, you might be able to see it or some of it here on YouTube or elsewhere. Okay, study the play. You can't just know your scene. You need to know the context here. Why is your character in this play? You know, what's, what's, their, what's their purpose? What's their role? Why is the playwright put them there? Okay, so study the play. Don't just wing it, learn your monologue, turn up. You've got to pass these questions at the end as well. So that was grade six, breathing, objective, and the role within the context of the play. Let's move on to grade seven, <clears throat> the, uh, the silver medal. So six was bronze, seven is silver. There are three bullet points here again. The first one, we've covered in six, the character's objective. What are they trying to achieve to dot, dot, dot. Decide your objective for both. Oh, I say both pieces. I do believe it's three pieces when we get, yes, it is. For all three pieces here, make sure you know your character's objective. Then the character's role within the context of the play, just like you did in grade six, except you need to learn it for all three, but the examiner will pick one. Don't just learn one and hope they pick that one. Learn all three and be confident whichever one your examiner picks on the day. Again, I would advise you write these down and, and memorize them. It's, it's an exam after all. Don't just sort of have a bit of a chat about it and, and hope that the right thing will come out read the play, watch the play, see bits of the play, see different people perform different bits of the play, read about it. If you're doing a classic, you know, there's stuff out there on Spark Notes, on BBC Bite Size, go and find out about the play itself and why your character's there. So that was the second bullet point. Third and final bullet point, the writing style and period of each piece and the examiner will pick one. Okay, so you need to know about the playwright. What style were they writing in? When were they writing? Get yourself a flavour for the time. If, if Shakespeare's your playwright, you know, find out what it was like when he was writing. What, what's the style of this piece? Maybe even in comparison to some of his other pieces. Maybe that's going a little far, but you know, really delve in here. I say this a lot to my students, you know, we live in a day and age where research is at the touch of a button for you now. Go, delve in, obviously always check your sources, but there's so much there that you can find out. So prepare all three to be able to say, firstly, what you need to say, who your playwright is in your introduction anyway. What are they writing? When are they writing? What is it like and why?
So that was grade seven, character's objective, role within the context of the play and the author's style and period. Make sure you know all three, but for bullet point two and three, they will only pick one of your pieces. Don't go play roulette, make sure you know them all. So our final grade then, grade eight, the gold medal. Um, I get students very excited at the, well, they can get UCAS points in, in six, seven and eight, but they get very excited about getting their UCAS points for grade eight, the questions. So again, they're performing three pieces selected from different eras, three bullet points at the end. The first one, I love this one. The process involved in developing the three characters for performance. I don't want this just tacked on at the end. Oh yeah, by the way, I did that process. Try and think about it during your rehearsals. What are you doing to create a character? My gosh, my brain goes crazy. There is so much that you're doing, sometimes subconsciously, other times consciously, and that depends on the student and the piece. You know, in its basic form, you're learning some lines, you're staging your piece. But then there's more detail than that, isn't there? You're feeling it, you're characterising it through your gesture, posture, movement. You're researching what was that character like in that era? And why did they behave in that way? There is so much in this process here. And you can also link it to the third bullet point that I'll come to in a moment. So that's the first bullet point. What is the process in developing all three of your characters for performance? I'm hoping the process is slightly different depending on your characters. You're not going to want to answer that as a blanket question. Think about each three. What did you have to do for a classic character compared to maybe one that's, that's set today? Maybe you're playing characters of different ages. What was the process you went through to make sure you were a convincing 40 year old or a eight year old child or whoever it is you are playing and the situation that they're in. So really delve into that, make your notes and memorize just like you've done for everything else. Second bullet point, the character's role within the context of the play. One will be selected. You need to know all three, just like I said for grade seven, you need to know all three because you don't know which one your examiner will select on the day. So again, read the play, watch the play, study the play so much at your fingertips, go and find it, go and find out about it. Why is your character there? What is their purpose? Not as them as a character, you know, not objective this time. Why has the playwright put them there? What do they do? What do they do to the audience? Do they make us uh, reevaluate ourselves? Who knows? Go and really delve into that one. Third and final bullet point. I love, 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 love this one the key principles and influences in the process of acting, so that's why you can link it a little bit to your first bullet point, in the process of acting for one of the following practitioners, and I'm sure you will have chosen your practitioner in conjunction with your teacher or your coach. So these are the practitioners currently on the specification. Stanislavski, Brecht, Gotowski, Katie Mitchell, Knee High, Arto, or Joan Littlewood. So that's your list. My students are currently using Stanislavski. I absolutely love using Stanislavski um, because in my opinion, you can apply him to anything. Even the modern stuff, you still need that sort of classic ability to act, I suppose. He really breaks down, for me, he breaks down a lot of things that actually my students nowadays take for granted or the talented actors just kind of do. And then Stanislavski makes you think about the process that you're doing. Or if you're struggling more, he gives you a, a process to work through. But nowadays you can pick and choose the bits that you want from his writing and his practice and use them. But again, you will choose that with the help of your teacher. They're brilliant practitioners, all of them. Um, and it, yeah, you once you know your practitioner, study them, research them, then do some practical 
exercises. That's again why I love Stanislavski because there's so much practical exercise that you can put in. Um, again, this is study, but you might find you apply it to your work, to your acting work, and you actually do those techniques that the practitioners are after. So I sometimes quite like to have more of a, or get, encourage my students to have more of a natural conversation where actually the process in developing the character, they can link to their practitioner, to their third bullet point. And by the time the examiner comes to asking that one, they might not need to ask you as much. Maybe you've said quite a lot of it in your first bullet point, but always have more. You don't want to get to that third bullet point and have nothing left to add. There is so much to study with these. Again, this is a bronze, a bronze medal. This is a gold medal here, and you are expected to do your research, to understand it, and to have it at the forefront of your mind, ready to have an engaging and intellectual conversation with your examiner. So that was grade eight or the gold medal of the Lambda current specification at the time of making this video, which started in 2019. I really hope that that was useful to you. I would love a like and a subscribe if you haven't already subscribed to The Drama Coach. And if there's anything else I can help you with, or if you have any questions about this video, then please drop me a comment below.